know? So what? He got hunted down. So what? You see it in movies all the time. We keep telling you this shit is gonna start happening, man. Now we're not people crying over this and stuff. The scripture says those that see, so in tears reap in joy. That's not talking about crying over someone that uh, 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 they died. Because the scripture says if you see an unjust ruling in a province and a perverting of the, uh, uh, of, of the lowly, you're not supposed to marvel at that matter. You see, we don't get upset. I'm rejoicing for him. He's in this. He's in the spiritual realm, man. He understands that those were Edomites chasing him. He understands that we're the prophets. We was telling the truth. You know, who knows? Maybe he might have ran. Maybe he might have scoffed at one of the prophets, or laughed at a video, or maybe put a thumbs down. Who knows? <laughs> who knows? <laughs> who knows what happened? But the Lord, the Lord saw it fit for him to punch his ticket in. And we don't get upset because we are adding value to our worth here while we got while we're here. That man, he was not adding value to his spiritual worth. Because that's what it's about. When, when, the, when the spiritual uh, when the spiritual realm uh, uh, collapses, and when I mean that the spiritual realm collapses, I'm talking about on the left hand side. When that collapse of evil comes, if you haven't invested in righteousness, if your value there is not high. You Hebrews 6 verse 10 For the Most High is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love which ye have shown toward his name in that ye have ministered to the saints There's the value There's the value right there by, at, by ministering to other people by bringing out the truth like I said, making yourself available being where the spirit of Yahweh by Shemi Yahweh is Alright, that's how you add value by ministering to the saints Doing, your, doing what you can, making videos. You know, who cares? You got, you got 400 videos in a total of, of five views. But the, who cares? The, the angels are with you. Why? You, they see you putting in your spiritual stock. That's equivalent to John being out there in the wilderness, man, and nobody listening to him, or to what the Lord told Ezekiel to prophesy to the wind. You know, because you got some brothers I've seen. You you got some brothers that do uh, videos that be within the camps that you ain't unnecessarily know, and they're getting comments from brothers from other countries. You know? So the elect's watching. And that's how you add value to yourself in this thing, man. Go ahead. God. Is this about, uh, 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 like, remember back in the day, we used to think about the, brown, the whole brownie points thing. All right? It's not about getting brownie points. It's about just doing your job, man. Just executing. If you just execute and be consistent and be disciplined, the Most High is going to say, you know what? I value you. You are going to be the 10,986 Asherite to make it. <laughs> you know? And your name's going to be called. You're going to get a crown, man. Go ahead. On uh, Hebrews, uh, Hebrews 6 and 10, For the Most High is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you have showed toward his name, and that you have ministered to the saints and right. do minister. So first, the first thing is what? The name. And not everybody harps on that. Oh, y'all are making the name a doctrine. It's like, who do you believe in? You know what I mean? Like, who are you calling on when you're in trouble then? Like, what are you telling the people who you coming? Because every throughout history, I don't care what nation of people you are. If you were coming to take over, you were coming to declare something, you gave credence to somebody, man. Whether they are on earth or in the, in the spiritual realm. Right. So that's how we add value to ourselves. First of all, we say, let's let's just kind of, let's establish the standard. We say, Yahweh HaShem Yahweh Yahweh means the Heavenly Father, and Yahweh Shah is His Son. That's the standard right there. That's right. Go ahead. Right. In that ye have ministered to the saints, and do minister. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end. Right, now it says that we show the same diligence. All right, but there's but there's a, a parable within that. Not everybody is gonna be as diligent as the next person. Some people are more diligent than others. You know why? It comes with experience. It comes with what this brother was talking about, how much you fear Yahweh Hashem Yahweh How much has he shaken you up? How much are you afraid? Right. It's going to determine how much you care and how much passion you're going to show towards prioritizing things around this truth, man. Around
down the prophecies about what's popping, man. That's right. The pulse of the people. That's right. You know? We said. Alright, uh, this is um first Corinthians chapter 16, verse 14. It says, Let all your things be done with charity. Verse 15. I beseech you, brethren, ye know the house of Stephens, that is the first fruits of a kind, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. You see that? They add that's they were adding value to their stock, man. And it, that what did that what did that start off with? It said all things be done in charity, man. Meaning voluntarily, meaning you just give you're giving it up because you want to. Not because the law says give 10%. Right? Not because it, uh, somebody has to tell you to do something. Mm -hmm. You should you should feel uh, uh, obligated because of your wrongdoings in the past. A lot of our people don't feel remorseful. When you understand reincarnation and these things like that, you understand, damn, we really fucked up. I really fucked up. That's right. You know? That's the one time where there's an I in this thing, you know, when it comes to brotherhood. And even that, it, that's good. When, you, when you're able to confess your faults in front of other brothers, that adds value to your stock as well, too. Because it shows that what? That, uh, this man can do it, then I should be doing that, too. Which the scripture says that. Because if you don't confess your faults one to another, you make the most high a liar. Alright? Like, but like the scripture says, they addicted them, addicted themselves to this ministry, man, and to this work, to the furtherance of it. And back then, there was heavy persecution throughout all of Rome's realm, man. Because they had, you see how we got Maryland, Utah, Idaho, you know, they had different states. Israel was just one of the states of Rome. Got something else, sir? Just uh, finish it. it again. First Corinthians 16 and uh, 14. Let all your things be done with charity. Verse 15. I beseech you, brethren, ye know the house of Stephanus, that is the first fruits of Achaia. And if you know anything about Achaia, we spoke about it. Um, Achaia was uh, the city in Corinth. That's where um, uh, that's where Timothy, uh, Timothy's father came. Timothy's father. You know when the scripture says Timothy's father was a Greek. He came from Corn, Achaia. And if you go back to Achaia, it was a colony of Negroes. It was a colony of so-called Greek Negroes, right? That lived in Greece. And most of them were very um into like uh, uh, um what's that sports and stuff like that. Alright, they were really big in, into sports and uh, athletics. Alright, and it came from a long line of uh, uh, Achaian war uh, warriors, such as um, what's the well-known dude, man? Uh, Achilles. Achilles, Achilles, the whole story of Achilles, it, it came from Achaia. And you know Achilles was a Negro. They tell you now, you can go to uh, uh, Netflix, the latest uh, uh, installment of um, um, Troy has got, you know, a so-called black man playing Achilles, and Achilles' men were all Negroes. So the Achaia was a the house of Stephens, that it is the first fruits of Achaia, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints, that ye submit yourselves unto such, and to everyone that helpeth with us and laboreth. So you got to submit yourself into what? Into the ministry of the saints. Like the Zaquan said, that's how you, you know, your value is looked at as um, charitable. It's not only to your own works, because um, Isaiah 64 and 6 says, But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags. And we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. It's not just so bad. You know, you know give a bread to the homeless, or the homeless, you know, in homeless shelters. That's not what's about. When the Lord speaks about going to speak to the widows, to the homeless, to the children. When the Lord said go and speak to the children, that word children, he could be referring to a child that's 75 years old. Because remember being a child means what? A babe spiritually and mentally. That's a child in the truth. If you just came into this truth and and, and yesterday, you were in your 75, you were 75 years old. So you gotta listen to the men that's been here before you. 
If that man is 15 years old and he's been in the truth for two years, he's spiritually and mentally, really spiritually for the most part, older. All right? So it's all about what? The spirituality and the ministry of the saints. So submit yourself to that. All right? You got to clean up. He says, our righteousness is filthy rags. You got to, we have to clean up uh, your own act first, man. Right? That's right. You know, in doing that, it shows the most, it shows the most high that you might be worth it. You know? Keep going. Oh, uh, read that joke. This is Job chapter 16, verse 19. It says, Also now, behold, my witness is in heaven, and my record is on high. Mm. Read that again. This is Job chapter 16, verse 19. Also now, behold, my witness is in heaven, and my record is on high. That's why we that's why we have so much confidence and we speak so boldly the way that we do. We don't give a damn what these people think. That's right. You know? That's why we speak over people. We tell people to stop talking. Because they don't understand that this, there's a there's a higher power that's watching this conversation. That's right. This watching what's going on, what I'm thinking and what you're thinking. You don't have to say anything. That's right. All right, that record is on high. All right. Now go back to uh, Hebrews. Yes or no? Right. This is Isaiah chapter 49 and 5. And now saith the Lord that formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him. Though Israel be not gathered, Yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord. Right. We're in the camera. We don't have a, a, a bunch of Israelites out here listening. Why? Because they're not scared yet. That's right. They're not shook. They still got food in the fridge. <laughs> you know? Some of their kids are still doing school online. Some of these people are still working. Look, clearly people can still put gas in their tanks. That's right. So even though these people, it, it, society is still going on, like nothing's happening, we still have to come out here and do this work. That's right. If we stop doing this, we can end up like Jonah. Look, I, we visualize that. That's right. You ever caught, any brothers ever been fishing? Ever caught a fish, felt how a fish feels? That's right, yep. Imagine being yep. inside of something like that. Yep. Huge, you know? And you can't do nothing about it for a couple of days. Nah, I'm coming out here to do the work. I'm doing everything I can do, man. Yeah. I'm gonna do the videos for spirits on me. I'm gonna do a two and a half minute video about something. That's right. That's if the right. spirit hits me, I'm gonna do it, man. That's right. Now that shows the most high that you care. That the life of a prophet is, is watching mm -hmm. and telling the people and showing the most high that look, I'm looking for you to show up and, 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 and do what you said you was gonna do. That's right. You know? And also if I can add on um, also as well, you gotta understand the problem still, because we you know we talked about it last week, right? You know, we really where we at right now is the awakening of the remaining of the one-third. Alright, because we believe that the hundred and fifty four thousand is a lot of shit. Alright? You ain't gotta worry about the hundred and fifty four thousand because they get it at the highest level. You know the problem now is not really a problem but it's a matter of time we dealt with the remaining of the one third, right? And them you know awakening day to day. So the problem is you still got some elect one third you know elect to be one third that's out there, they're still on that world. You know, this really, this also shall pass type, type spirit. You know, we, we, we know we've seen this before. I'm not really sure, I know these prophets are saying something and, it's, and it resonates with my spirit, but yet they're kind of in the fence because, remember, not every man's faith is on the same level. Okay? A man that's, that's part of 100,000, what you hope to be, right? And then the faith of a man who's just a part of the one third, the remain, it's not the same level. Okay? So you have you understand why they, they you know it's taking a little bit of time for them and it kind of interfets. But this is what we say through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shem This is Luke 21. Luke 21, verse um, 31, it says, So likewise ye, when ye see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of the most high is now at hand. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away to all be fulfilled. So this generation here, this is the generation of the end. So you can't say this also shall pass. Because you're seeing all of these things happen. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to be able to pass this on to your grandchildren. And say, you know what? It's going to happen when my grandchildren grow up. They're going to have to deal with this. No, you're going to have to deal with this, man. You, your children, you're going to have to deal with this. You're going to have to see this mass death and destruction. This famine that's coming up. So you, you best make that decision right now, man. All right? You gotta make that decision right now, man. It's all or nothing. It's all or nothing right now, man.
And that's the spirit that you see in the men of the Lord. We understand. The prophets understand what we're at. of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Right, faith and patience. Those are things that also uh, add value to yourself. And it said what? Those are the ones that inherited the promises. You know? Joshua, uh, 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 Caleb, even though Moses didn't uh, uh, go into the land, all right, he inherited the promises because he saw them afar off. He saw he saw the destruction of America. He, saw, he gave us the curses, all that. He saw it all. He had to. Now, now he then came and went. He, he came back down here on the earth, as we believe, as a, a King Masha. All right, coming back in the reincarnation. Now he's in the spiritual realm. So now, of course, he's going to see the promises, and he had faith, and he had patience. And we are the we're the fruit of all that. None of us can say that we aren't. None of us can say that we aren't. All right. Now we're falling in that same stead. We don't have to see, we don't have to see exactly the details of the kingdom. Look, it's, it gave us the stones, uh, the uh, general idea, the outlining of the temple and all that stuff. Mm. You know, that's all we need. That's right. You know, I don't need to know how many carbuncle stones or how many sapphire stones, the exact number, you know, how many Edomites or whatever heathen is going to take to lift them. I don't need to know that. I just need to know who, I, I need to hope and pray that I'm there, you know? That's right. I just want to be there. That's right. And the purpose of having hope, um, you know, is, is, oh, is actually not having all the details given to you. It's still believing that the outcome is going to be good for you. How many people are able to do that? A lot of people want to brainstorm with things, right? They want, which that's a woman-like spirit. If you tell a woman, hey, listen, man, just follow me. This shit going to happen. I'm going to make it happen. She's not going to be satisfied with that. She wants to know how you're going to make it happen. She wants to sit down and she wants you to give her all the details, right? All the fine print before she jump into your shit. But that's not how it's supposed to be. All right? I'm going to give you enough and the rest you just going to have to believe. That's where hope comes in. Because with hope, if you believe without me giving you all the details, that brings what? That means out what? That means that you're loyal to me. Okay? And that's what the Lord is looking for. That loyalty that Jake is talking about. Yahweh Bashim is looking for that loyalty, man. And only the elect have that loyalty. Alright? Uh, precept. This is um Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2, verse 13. It says, Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great power and our Savior, Hamashiach Yahusha. Verse 14, who gave himself to us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify into himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. All right? The peculiar people, zealous of good works. Is a All right? we, we have that zeal, you know, and guess what? That zeal is according to knowledge. That's right. All right? It's not just being in the air. Like Paul said, I don't want as one that beat up in the air. Our zeal is according to knowledge, man. Knowledge that we have are facts, you know what I'm saying? That's why we, we skip Ephesians uh, 6 and uh, 8 or 6 and 10. That, that's why we speak the way that we do. We're so boldly with it. People, and the way that we speak, we're so confident that people get defensive so quick. <laughs> they get defensive so quick, and all we're doing is just telling the truth. But because we say it in a certain tone and we emphasize and say things a certain way, they can't understand it. If you notice, brothers, we all speak and say certain things a certain way. That's right. You know, so you can understand. And why is that? Because there's a certain there's a way there's a way that you uh, that you kind of bring out this truth. Of course, every brother has their different way. But ultimately, we're one body. It's one fluid motion of the truth coming out. You know. Yeah, and, and the confidence um, the confidence comes from what? I mean, confidence really just comes from uh, knowledge. You know, the word confidence, of course, means with faith. But that means you have faith in what, in what you know. See, that's the difference between a man who's confident and a man who's not confident. A man who's not confident is a man who doesn't know. Right? Just like you go into anything. If you go into any field, 
And, and you don't have to feel the shame. That's where humility comes in, right? And there's nobody that wakes up being confident getting into a field that he has no idea about. You know, you never ridden a horse ever. I don't care how confident you out here in the streets. They put you in that horse and you ain't gonna feel that confidence. Why? Because it's a different field. But guess what? Your confidence is gonna build the more you learn and you gain knowledge and experience out of the horse. But guess what? That first time you have that horse, it's gonna hold you. You're gonna need a grown man to hold a horse, right? <laughs> to the truth, you gotta hate, you have to be humble, right? Understanding that you're not just gonna come up in this, in this truth of bold and confident because you don't know enough. Okay? This is uh, first Peter chapter 3, verse, verse 15, it says, but, sin but sanctify the Lord power in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope. To give an answer, you better be confident. That's right. You know, you have you have you better be ready to speak a certain way to individuals, especially if they're coming they're coming for the truth or if they're just being sincere. That's right. Then you have to have a certain level of uh, 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 confidence and integrity, all right, for this thing to be able to answer people always. That's you right. Know? That's right. And that comes with doing your due diligence. All right. It, it comes with doing doing your due diligence and getting in the books. Burying your head in the books and the truth and the words that you hold about your mouth shut. And the more you know, the more confident you are. I mean, there's just no way around that. You know what I'm saying? That's the key to confidence. Believing in what, what the Lord has given you, right? So I'm gonna keep going. First Peter chapter 3, verse 15. But sanctify the Lord power in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Verse 16. Having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you, as of evil doers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Hamashiach Yahushua. So you have to have a good conscience. The word conscience, I would say, con means what? Science means what? Knowledge. That's where you get the word conscience. It's con science or conscience with knowledge. Now, another word for con besides with is thorough. Okay? So if you add thorough to science and knowledge, that means what? We have a good thorough knowledge of this word. You see that? That's when we, we speak, we speak with boldness. Because we know what the hell we're talking about. And we know that when you step up to the plate, you step up to the altar with your sacrifice, right? You're gonna get burnt, man. You're gonna get burnt. The Lord said that what? Uh, what's that um that Jeremiah 2 uh it says in the uh, Especially when you know the book is talking about you. I mean, think about it. Let's say you open up a book and it's got your name written all over it. I know what's happening next to I mean, come on, man. So you're going to sit there and you're going to be like, uh, uh, I'm supposed to, to do this, but I don't know. Uh, you know, no, it's it's you. So when your house shot spoke, he's, he was speaking about himself every time he read it. So he didn't have to be ashamed. He wasn't shaken. He spoke with authority, all right? And that's the same entire year we have. When we speak about Yahweh Shah, we're not ashamed because we know what we're talking about. Yeah. We go into the conversation knowing we're going to win this. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's the mindset that we have, all right? Yeah, and, then, and then another point about that uh, scripture that you read, it started off knowing, saying that you have to put the, uh, the reason or the hope that's within you. You have to under, the reason means when you reason with something, that means you understand it. That's right. So knowing that you understand the hope that you have inside of you, it's not going to matter what these evil people say about you. Because they're going to have a lot of things to say to sway your mind. But if you're confident 
they can say whatever the hell they want about you. That's right. Just to add on the, uh, the Apocrypha, the scripture in the Apocrypha said that the trial of all man is in, the, in their reasoning. You know, so every man gets trial ultimately according to their reasoning. How you, how you, you know, think about certain things, what you know about certain things. That's why the scripture says that what, what defiles a man is what comes out of his mouth, because his thought, his mind is already processed, and what you're getting is it's the final product. And if it's against the scriptures, then you know this man ain't right. Right now, of course, we all make mistakes. You know, we have to slip of the tongue, but then when that happens, you repent. Showing that, oh, you are right, you just made a mistake. All right? But a two third, the scripture says, what? When the wicked falleth into mischief, when the wicked falleth, he falleth into mischief. Meaning he keeps on going, he's going to double down on the bullshit, right? Come up with his own doctrine, right? You rebuke him, and he's like, nah, fuck that. He's going to double down, triple down in that bullshit, right? Why? Because he's wicked, he's falling into two third. This is uh, Jeremiah chapter 5 and 14. What? Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, because ye, because ye spake, so like ye speak this word, behold, I will make my words in thy mouth fire, right. and this people wood, and it shall devour them. Right, I mean, absolutely. And the people that are wood is talking about two thirds out of the nation of Israel. Why? Because the fire, you know, when we breathing out this fire, which is the word of the Lord, right? If you're a man of the Lord and elect, guess what? It's not going to burn you. Why? Because you're gold and silver. Gold and silver, guess what they do under fire? They get purified. They don't burn. Right. All right? They're purified by fire. But anybody that has wood, they're getting their asses wet. But the fuck up. Excuse my language. Yeah. But that's the two thirds. All right? But us, hopeful elect, we believe that we the gold and the silver. All right? And then when this fire hits us, you know, it, 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 it purifies and it removes us. That 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 left. All right. I'm gonna read the uh, Ephesians. Uh, this is Ephesians chapter six and verse nineteen. And for me, that the utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery, the mystery of the gospel, that also adds value to you. And the Lord Yahweh Bashmal Shasi, that you speaking it boldly against all odds. You know, that shows that you really believe this thing. And, and, and you see at the rate the brother, I'm surprised my channel hasn't gotten deleted yet. You know? But you see why brothers brothers' pages are getting clipped left and right, man. Yeah. Why? Because they speak it boldly as we are to speak. And that's the uh, that utterance was given unto us. Alright? Moses spoke boldly in front of uh, uh, Pharaoh. Alright? All our ancestors spoke boldly. Uh, the different judges, they spoke boldly, the prophets. They all spoke boldly, the disciples, the apostles, the followers of Yahweh Shai, which are us, were all commissioned to speak boldly, man. That's right. Go ahead. Hey, brother, that's the reason why they deleting brothers' pages, man, shutting it down. Um, again, it's nothing new, right? Right? Censorship, spiritual censorship. Um, Amos chapter 7, verse 10. It says that Amaziah, the priest of the Lord, sent to Jeroboam, king of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired. When we say that the mark, the, the mark of the beast, right, spoken of in Revelation, the 13th chapter, the 15th, the 16th verse, is the R F R F. channels and all that but that don't matter because guess what we are relentless man yeah, that's right the spirit of Yahweh by Shemel Shah is relentless what do you think we are spirits right we are spirits of our trapped in bodies but the intelligence the spirit doesn't get tired the spirit never gets tired it's the flesh that gets tired so as long as the Lord keep pumping his Holy Spirit on the spirit
are possessed individuals, all right? We're totally possessed. We're totally gone into the world of righteousness, man. That's right. All right, we dove in. We took that leap of faith, okay? With no safety net, man, all right? 